I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. And the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. And God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish, but would have everlasting life. Please take your seats. I want to offer you a very warm welcome to Memorial United Methodist Church today. 
We are glad that you are here and that you have chosen to join us here for these special moments as we celebrate Marion's life. I also want to be careful to welcome those who are joining us online, wherever you may be today. We are glad that you are able to join us in this way, and we do hope that you very much feel a part of our service in this moment. Friends, we are gathered here to worship God today and to celebrate the life of Marion Housel. And of course, these moments are hard and difficult for those of you who knew her and who loved her the most, but we do trust that as we are gathered in these moments together, as we pray together, as we sing praises to God, as we honour and celebrate Marion's life, and as we bear witness to the gospel of God's unconditional love and everlasting grace, as we do all of those things, we will know the presence of God with us by the power of God's own Spirit. We are going to sing together again as we start our service. It is number 328 in your hymnals. Surely the presence of the Lord. And I'm going to invite you to stand again as we sing. Surely. take your seats and let's bow our heads and pray together. God our comforter, you are our refuge and our strength. You are a help close at hand in times of trouble. So help us to hear your word today so that our fear may be dispelled, our loneliness eased and our hope reawakened. May your Holy Spirit lift us above our sorrow to the peace and light of your constant love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As I said, friends, we are gathered in this solemn moment to worship God and to reaffirm the Christian hope, to give thanks for Marian's life and to commend her to God's loving and faithful care. And of course to express our sympathy to and to pray for all who are mourning. In the presence of death, Christ offers us sure ground for hope and for confidence and yes, even for joy. Because he shared our human life and death, was raised again triumphant and lives forevermore. In him, his people find eternal life. So let us hear then the words of Holy Scripture, so that from them we may draw comfort and strength. I want to share with you two readings today. First one is from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 through 58, where Paul says to the church in Corinth, Listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in a flash. In the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised imperishable, and we will be changed. For the perishable must clothe itself with the imperishable, and the mortal with immortality. When the perishable has been clothed with the imperishable and the mortal with immortality, then the saying that is written will come true. Death has been swallowed up in victory. 
Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labour is not in vain. And a second reading today from the book of Revelation, chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, where John the Revelator writes, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no longer any sea. I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Look, God's dwelling place is now among the people and he will dwell with them. They will be his people and God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning, or crying, or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Then he said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty, I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. And we do thank God for the reading of the scripture here in this place today. Amen. We're going to take a moment of uh, tribute now, and I'm going to invite um, Marion's great friend, Doris Davis, to come forward. And uh, she's going to share with us a personal tribute. your being here. They are so grateful for the love that this community has shown during Marion's illness and you are testimony to the life that she lived that was so wonderful, so giving, and so true. Marion Housel came into my life suddenly in 2002. I had been on my walk to Emmaus and a few of us had formed a reunion group for prayer and accountability that met weekly in the Parton Center. One of the group invited an outsider who, who did not attend Memorial and none of the rest of us knew her. The one who invited Marion shortly left the group. <laughs> but Marion remained and even moved her membership to Memorial. Little did I know then that our friendship would last 22 years. Marion remained constant, faithful, encouraging, giving, serving, praying, reminding the rest of us to do the same. She led by example, quietly, working diligently, attending training for Emmaus weekends and Kairos outside, serving on teams inside and outside. No one thought agape was more important for those attending the weekends than Marion. Together, our group, the Amelia Island Babe Chicks, 
made agape with all kinds of crazy stuff. Mints on a card that said, you were meant to be here. Pencils that said, get the lead out and follow Jesus. Gum, stick with Jesus. Erasers, Jesus erases all your sins. You have some agape in your pew this morning. Marion would have loved that. That little, uh, in case you didn't recognize them, they are little babe chicks. And there is agape inside for you. These notes and treats were given to those who attended the weekends. Our group was so happy and proud when Marion was asked to be a table leader and speaker. She had trouble being understood sometimes, but she practiced, and we coached her to speak slowly so each word was enunciated clearly. It was an honor to give an Emmaus talk, and Marion was the only one of us that ever did. There were other members of our group that came and went over the years, but four of us remained until last Thursday. And now we are three. But we are filled with memories of life together. We are united by shared experiences, praising God, worshiping together, growing in Christ through study, and experiencing the Holy Spirit move among us in retreat. We are Christian sisters. It might not have been very Christian when we told the ICU nurse that we were indeed sisters when one of our group had a stroke and none of her family was near. If you could see the four of us together, I don't think you could find any familial resemblance. <laughs> Imagine four women around the same age, give or take 10 years, who might not have ever formed a friendship except for God pulling us together and giving us one another to love, comfort, and support through what lay ahead. The loss of mothers and fathers, the loss of a grandson, a sister, a husband, a daughter, births, graduations, weddings, and funerals, what we don't know about each other and each other's families. We shared much more than any of our families would want us to. <laughs> but we knew our thoughts and feelings were safe in the hearts of our group. If you are in Marion's family, you can rest a little easy since we have reached the point where our memories aren't that good. <laughs> Although, we can still recall a few of the really good stories about some of your most colorful kin. <laughs> Beth Mitchell is Marion's younger sister, and I want to commend her for being so loving and supportive of Marion through this most difficult time of her life. Beth has made numerous trips to and from Gordo to be with Marion and make arrangements for her care. She has been so strong throughout the challenging days of rehab, doctors and lawyers and hospice and end of life decisions, always trying to honor Marion's wishes. She has gone without sleep and food. She has suffered other family loss as well. This is truly one of life's most difficult times for her. Having a flat tire on 8th Street could have been the final straw, but she took it in stride. One of the blessings of knowing Marion is that I also got to know Beth and Kathy, Daniel and Jim. Blessings on each of you. Marion was always giving us Emmaus gifts, like crosses, decolorous signs, etched wine glasses to commemorate our 15th year of grouping, and probably the best one of all was the license plate frame that was printed with Amelia Island Bajics. 
The joy was not unanimous having baked chicks on the back of our cars. <laughs> we all put them on, but mine and Marion's seem to have lived the longest. When our group traveled, Marion and I always shared a room. Marion was probably the most adventurous of the group, more into being outside and active than inside watching movies, playing games, or shopping. She got frustrated with us from time to time. We went to the Holy Land in Orlando once, and Marion wanted to go to Disney at night. But none of the rest of us wanted to go, but we went anyway to appease her and we hope that she enjoyed it since none of us did. <laughs> it was nighttime after all, you know, <laughs> we are old. <laughs> Marion was easygoing, but knew how to say no when she really didn't want to do something. She didn't get caught up in drama and politics. Her favorite response was, it is what it is. One of my favorite trips with Marion was to Orange Beach on the Panhandle in Alabama. I knew I was in with Marion when she invited me to her sister's condo there. Marion loved attending church in the bar at Florabama. It was an interesting experience right on the Gulf that drew a big crowd. The music was good. The bar was not open during services, but the gift shop was and the preaching was pretty good. Let me just say, that is a long drive. <laughs> but not as long a drive as it is to Gordo, Alabama. <laughs> Marion's hometown. I have never been to Gordo, but I always wanted to go, especially to participate in the Mule Day and Chicken Fest every first weekend of June. <clears throat> I am told there is a parade and food vendors and a special t-shirt is printed each year. Marion's Mule Day t-shirts made me grin from ear to ear. She bought me one years ago. I brought it. It's right down there. I want you to take a look at it. It is still on my bucket list to see Mule Day live and in person. If any of you all are interested, maybe we can get a busload to go. <laughs> Mule Day or Bust. <coughs> Marion was a big Auburn fan, unlike some other people in her family. Jim, War Eagle. We would celebrate the victories and moan over the losses for about a minute. Marion participated in at least two Bible studies a week and Sunday school. She had a devotional and prayer time every day. She had what she called arrow prayers that were shot out throughout the day for anything that caught her attention moving through the day. Her favorite musical group was the Gaithers, and she would drive to Soul Feast at Lake Junaluska every summer to hear Trevor Hudson, one of her most favorite preachers from South Africa. I joined that fan club too, and made at least two trips up there. Marion had a CD of every talk he ever gave, her faith was strong, and many times we marveled at her resolve and strength as cancer threatened her. She fought the good fight and remained strong in her devotion to Christ and confident of her eternal life. When she made the decision to not resume cancer treatment, I asked her directly if she was ready to see Jesus. And she unequivocally said yes. Over the last several weeks of her life, we grouped with her on Thursdays. And I would read a chapter from a different book by my favorite spiritual author, Robert Benson. We said our prayer to the Holy Spirit and shared our worship, study, and service for the week. I know there are many Emmaus and Kairos outside folks with us today. If you know the prayer of the Holy Spirit, say it with me now. And if you do not know that prayer, listen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit, 
and we shall be created, and you shall renew the face of the earth. O God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by that same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. I could talk for a few more hours, although I know there's somebody else who would rather I didn't. <laughs> so, I just want to say that Mary was an important person, not just in my life, but in all your lives, and beyond you, to all the children that she ever worked with for over 30 years at Emma Love all the people that went to Kairos and all the people that went to Emmaus. Her life is bigger than we all know. And she is now at peace, filled with joy, and celebrating with her Lord and Savior. De Caloris. Doris, I could happily listen to you for a few hours more. <laughs> but they're making lunch next door, so we've got to keep it moving. <laughs> Thank you, Doris, for, uh, for such a personal tribute and for, uh, for saying all the things that I have in my notes here as well. So if you didn't hear it first time, you'll get it the next time. We're going to take just a moment. Uh, one of the things I asked Beth when we were planning this service was, what music would you like? And, and Beth... Uh, Beth had too many songs to choose from, so, but one of the most important ones she wanted to be sung today was uh, I Can Only Imagine, and, uh, and Joey and Jeannie are worship leaders here at the 9.30 service that Marion attended faithfully, and um, they're going to lead us just now, they're going to sing that for us, I Can Only Imagine. I know this uh, is a familiar song, so if you know it, please feel free to sing along. I can only imagine what it will be like when I walk by your side. I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine So I can only imagine 
When I look at your faces here today, I, uh, I realize that my six years of knowing Marianne Household peels into insignificance against the many, many years that you all have known her and loved her. But in those six years since I came here to Fernandina Beach to be the senior pastor at Memorial United Methodist Church, in those six years I've certainly got to know Marianne a little bit just by picking up on little bits and pieces that I would have conversations with her on Sunday morning. And during that time, there's several things that I learned about her. And the first one is that there's nobody who knows the road back to Alabama better than Marion Housel. <laughs> I mean, it felt like she was in church every week, but somehow she was always in Alabama as well, visiting her family, who were also important to you. A small connection of family, but a connection of family that were so deeply deeply important to Marion and, uh, and she loved you all she loved you all so so much and we heard about you just as Doris said and I know that you loved her too and I got to see that personally particularly in these last few months of Marion's life what a gift it is to have a loving family amen, amen. but she didn't only know the road to Alabama she also loved to travel to other places because that's the other thing I don't know how she was in all these places at the same time because she was always in church, she was always, always in Alabama, but every time I saw her in church, she was telling me about her next cruise, or her next trip overseas, or, or where she was going to be traveling to next. She loved to travel, loved to travel. But when all of those things weren't working out, she was back here in Fernandina, a place that she loved, a place that she called home for these last several decades. From the early 70s until her retirement in 2009, Marion, as you know better than I, was a teacher and guidance counsellor at Emma Love Hardy Elementary School. Now, stop for a wee second with me and think about that. More than 30 years teaching in one place. You think about the scores, the hundreds, maybe thousands of children that passed through Marion Housel's care in those 35 or 37 years. That is an immense influence that she has had in our community. And if you know teachers, then you know that teachers are the most caring, the most devoted, and the most loving people on the planet. They give of themselves. They give of their time and their heart. They give of their own resources to ensure that every child in their care is treated equally, is treated well, to the very best of that teacher's ability. I can't even begin to imagine the ripples of Marion Housel's impact in our community and world as those hundreds, maybe thousands of children have grown up and gone on to do whatever they have done in the world. What a legacy of love we celebrate here today. A love that I am convinced was born not only of a close family connection where she learned love, but also out of this very deep faith in Jesus Christ that we have already heard testified to by Doris. Marion cultivated her deep faith in Jesus Christ, found great joy in that faith journey. And when she wasn't traveling that road to Alabama or when she wasn't booking her next cruise trip, I would see her here at Memorial, like I said, at our 9.30 service in Maxwell Hall every week. She attended Bible studies on the regular to help her grow in her faith. She engaged in mission work and enjoyed the fellowship of her UMW circle, now known as the Women in Faith, the Jackie Tomasetti Circle. She, as we've heard, was an enthusiastic member of the Walk to Emmaus community here in Northeast Florida. And each time a retreat would be approaching, I would know when they were coming up because Marion would come at me with her, her little board and she would ask me would I be signing up for the prayer wheel for the walk to Emmaus, which of course I was only too happy to do. You see, she took seriously the call to be in prayer for those pilgrims, whether she was serving and attending a weekend or whether she was not. 
And she wanted to invite her church to be part of praying through so that that would be a successful retreat experience. So that pilgrims would meet with Christ in their experience. And Beth shared with me also that story about agape gifts and how she was roped into helping create them at various times along the way as well. Those agape gifts are given, like Dora said, to express God's extravagant and unconditional love for the pilgrims that move through their walk to Emmaus experience. I still have many of the agape gifts that were given to me 21 years ago when I made my own walk to Emmaus. Again, what a legacy of love, what a ripple of impact from doing something as simple as filling a plastic egg with a piece of candy saying from the babe chicks of Amelia Island. <laughs> but this passion for the walk to Emmaus also developed and kindled in Marion her other passion. And this is where I would have seen her again exercising her ministry and her faith in our life together here at Memorial. It was through the Kairos prison ministry and particularly the Kairos outside ministry, which works with women whose lives have been most impacted by the effects of incarceration. And again, whenever I think of that, when I think of those pilgrims on Emmaus walks, whenever I think of those women that were ministered to through Kairos outside in that ministry, again, I can only imagine the ripples of impact that Marion's life has created as she lived out her calling as a follower of Jesus Christ. Marion Housel loved the Lord Jesus. This was evident in her character. This was evident in her faith walk. I'm pretty sure it was evident to those scores and hundreds and thousands of children that passed through her care. Marion loved the Lord Jesus. She showed it with her priorities, with how she spent her time, with how she interacted with people, with how she faced her illness these last couple of years. More importantly, though, the Lord Jesus Christ loved Marian. Every single day, every single moment of her life, God's amazing grace lavished upon her, whether she knew it or not or understood it or not. And when she did start to understand it, it only continued to be poured out upon her life and then through her, through to the rest of the world. Every moment of her life, God Father, Son, and Holy Spirit loved Marian Housel with an unconditional, unbreakable, and an everlasting love. Now, isn't that good news to be able to proclaim as we celebrate her life? Marian found rest in the love of God. She found rest in this earthly life. And I'm here to tell you today that she will find rest forevermore in the presence of the God who loved her so. We are in the middle of Holy Week, which is not only the busiest time of the year for a preacher, but it's also the most important time of the year for the whole church family. The time of the year when we remember Christ's passion, Christ's suffering, his death, and ultimately on Easter Sunday when we celebrate his glorious resurrection and all that it means for humanity. And we will celebrate that here on Easter Sunday. You all will celebrate it in your own churches as well. We will celebrate that Christ rose from the grave, that the grave could not hold him, that the power of sin and death in this life was overcome and defeated by Jesus Christ through his death and resurrection and the best thing about Christ's victory is that Christ invites the whole world to share in it oh, now isn't that good news too yeah. Marion shared in Christ's victory by placing her faith in Christ Jesus and by receiving his gift of grace as a gift and that's why we can proclaim confidently today as we celebrate her life, that Christ's victory over sin and death is also Marian Housel's victory over sin and death. 
As Paul wrote to the church in Corinth, death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, he has given us victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. He has given Mariam victory through Jesus Christ her Lord. She suffers no more. No more pain, no more tears, no more death, no more mourning. It's no more in the place where she is right now. We read that in the Revelation text, didn't we? A famous text from the tail end of the book of Revelation where the writer says to us and speaks to us about this new creation. We hear that loud voice from the throne saying, look, God's dwelling place is now among mortals. He will live among them. They will be his people. God himself will be with them and will be their God. He will wipe away every tear. No more death, no more mourning, no more crying, for the old order of things has passed away. And then he said that we could write these words down because they were trustworthy and true. It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water without cost from the spring of the water of life. If I ever met anyone who drank from the spring of the water of life, it was Marian Housel. And I think that you all would agree with me as I say that too. She loved the Lord Jesus Christ. She received his gift of salvation by faith, and she will live forevermore in the presence of Christ. And she no longer has to only imagine what that would look like. She lives there forevermore. And by faith, by faith, friends, we might receive the same gift too. And therefore live with the hope of seeing her again one day, sharing some of those stories that really shouldn't be shared, right, Doris? sharing in the unconditional love of God that we will enjoy forevermore. Friends, today is a great day of great sadness for those who called Marian friend, for those who knew her as family. But today is also a day of great rejoicing because the very epitome of our faith, the promise of the gift of eternal life, has become our sister's reality. And for that we give thanks today. In the name of the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Pastor Alice is going to lead us in prayer. Like Pastor Charlie, I only knew Marion for about six years, but it was a joy and a privilege to know her. And one of the things that has been mentioned today is how much prayer <coughs> meant to Marion. From those little prayers that she would send up to the uh, enlisting people to sign up for the prayer vigil for Emmaus. Marian knew the power of prayer. So let us pray in her honor. Merciful God, we praise you that we are made in your image and likeness. We thank you for the life of Marian and for the love and mercy she received from you and showed amongst us. We rejoice in your gracious promise to all your servants living and departed, that we shall rise again to be with Christ. We ask that we may come to share in your glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. O God of mercies and God of all comfort, you have made nothing in vain, and you love all that you have made. So comfort this family, if you will, in their loss and sorrow, We pray for Marion's family, for her sister Beth and Beth's husband Jim, her nephew Daniel, for her beloved cousins, the wider family circle, and all those who knew and loved her. her. Would you, O Lord, be their refuge and their strength, lifting them from the depths of grief into the peace 
and light of your presence. Your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by dying has destroyed our death, and by rising has restored our life. Enable us, therefore, to press on toward him, so that after our earthly courses run, he may reunite us with those we love, when every tear will be wiped away. Support us, O oh Lord, all the day long, until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of his life is over, and our work is done. Then in your mercy, Spirit, grant us a safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at the last. We bring these prayers to you now, O God, in the name of your Son and our Lord Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray in one voice, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now I invite you to stand as you're able, and let us sing together the wonderful hymn, Because He Lives. It's number 364 in the hymnal. God sent his son, they call him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to my life for him, and empty grave is there to prove my Savior.
Friends, before I pronounce the benediction today, I want to speak on behalf of the family, thanking you all for, for being here. And if you do have some time today, they would love to welcome you into Maxwell Hall. That is the building directly behind us here in the sanctuary. You can walk along 6th Street and you'll find your way there, uh, where we have a, a small luncheon together, a time just to fellowship with the family and share some stories and memories of Marion's life. But now, Almighty God, into your hands we do commend our sister Marion in the sure and the certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. And friends, now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. And then one day I'll cross that river I'll find life's fine No war with pain And then as death Give Oh, man.